the viruses, uh, such as flu. Or Dr. Hammer, a molecular geneticist, claims he has identified the God gene in human DNA. It's called VMAT2, and its job is to release the feel-good chemicals in our body called dopamine and serotonin, which give us the experience of bliss. VMAT2 is the DNA gene of our pineal gland. What's the pineal gland? It's a gland about the size of a raisin located between our eyebrows and directly behind our eyes, right smack in the middle of our cranium. It's called a pineal gland because it resembles a tiny pine cone. This powerful gland is believed to be the seat of our soul and the gateway to the universe and higher realms. Because its structure is remarkably similar to our eyeballs, it's called the third eye or the mind's eye. It actually has a lens, cornea, and retina. The blue bloods revere it. They call it the all-seeing eye and have featured it on the US $1 bill. Strangely, our pineal gland, which is tucked away in the dark recesses of our brain, is bioluminescent and sensitive to light. Like a cell phone, it has a built-in wireless transmitter and is the connecting link between the physical and spiritual worlds and higher frequencies. By awakening our pineal gland, we can speed up our learning and memory abilities, enhance our intuition, wisdom and creativity, trigger our psychic healing abilities, and experience bliss. The symbol of this pine cone shaped gland is the pine cone. It is so revered by the Vatican that a special court was built called the Court of the Pine Cone where the symbol of the world's largest pineal gland is on display. The symbol is also found on the staff of the Pope and the Egyptian god Osiris. Considering the power and function of the pineal gland, why has it been ignored and given so little mainstream attention? Why? Because it's our power source and the ruling families know this. Medical science refers to the pineal gland as the atrophied third eye. By the age of 12, it is already calcified and hardened, and by adulthood, it is dormant and atrophied from lack of use. Recent research reveals that fluoride, which is a toxic additive to our water supply and toothpaste, accumulates in the pineal gland where it wreaks havoc. Outdoor activities, eating less sugar, and eliminating processed foods and fluoride from our diet can help to revitalize it. Excuse me, on the left over here, we have individuals who are religious fun fundamentalists, religious fanatics, and this is the expression, uh, RT-PCR, real-time PCR uh, expression of the VMAT2 gene. Over here, Doctor, we have individuals, in theory, so, so, so let, let me complete, so over here, we have uh, individuals who are not particularly uh, fundamentalists, not particularly religious, and you can see there's a, a much reduced uh, expression of, of this particular gene, the, the VMAT2 uh, gene. Uh, another evidence that, that supports our, our hypothesis for the development of, of, of this um, approach. Uh, so what, you, what you see here is by, by, by spreading this virus, we're going to eliminate individuals from donning on a bomb vest and going into a market and up so our, our hypothesis is that these are fanatical people, uh, that they have overexpression of the VMAT2 gene and that by vaccinating them against this, we'll eliminate this behavior. Uh, so we have some, some very, very uh, remarkable data in this next slide. Uh, here we have two uh, brain scans. These are fMRIs. Uh, these are two different individuals with different levels of expression of VMAT2 uh, on top. Uh, is an individual who's a religious fanatic and individual, and we've repeated this numerous times, that, that uh, has uh, high levels of EMAT2. Now, um, this individual down here who had low levels of the VMAT2 gene, this individual would uh, self-describe as, as, as not particularly religious. In, in each case, uh, these individuals were, were read a religious text. Uh, this individual uh, light lit up um, this, the right middle frontal gyrus, 
uh, shown here. And uh, that's a part of the brain that's associated with theory of mind. Uh, it's a part of the brain that, that uh, has to do with intents and, and beliefs and, and desires. Uh, in contrast, in marked contrast, here's an individual who would uh, not particularly uh, self-describe as, as religious. And when they're read a religious text, <clears throat> what you see is that this part of the brain called the anterior insula lights up. This is a part of the brain that's associated with, with disgust or displeasure on hearing something. Uh, so you're suggesting I take a CT scan with me when I'm uh, evaluating people to determine whether I put a bullet in their head? So, so um, the, the data that I'm presenting here uh, supports uh, the, the concept that, that we're proposing. Uh, and I think that uh, we would not propose to do uh, CT scans or fMRIs on, on individuals out in the hinterlands of, of Afghanistan. The virus would immunize ag against this VMAT2 gene, and that would, would have the effect that you see here, which is it's essentially to turn a fanatic into a, a, a normal person. And nope. we think that will have major effects in the Middle East. How would you suggest that this is going to be dispersed in aerosol? Well, so, so the, the present uh, plan and the tests that we've done so far um, have used uh, uh, respiratory viruses, uh, such as flu or, or uh, rhinoviruses. And uh, we believe that that's a satisfactory way to get the exposure of the largest uh, part of the population. Most of us, of course, have, ha have been exposed to both of those viruses. And, and we're, we're quite confident that, that this will be a, a, a very successful uh, approach. What's the name of this proposal? Yeah, so, so the name of this project is FunVax, which is the vaccine for religious fundamentalism. And you have a proposal already? The proposal uh, has just been submitted, and I think that the data that I have shown you today would, would support uh, the, the development of, of this project, and we think it has great promise.